what's going on guys in this video i'm going to show you how to set up custom roles in strapi and then i'm going to show you how strapi handles api authorization by using json web tokens remember to subscribe to the channel and let's get started i already initialized a new strapi project connected to mongodb atlas i'm going to add the link here to the video so that you can understand how to do it and now i'm going to start the strapi server in development mode so this is npm run develop. Okay, now let's go to Strapi's administration panel and let's create a new content type here. So this new content type will be shop. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I'm just going to set up three fields, the title of the shop, the company that is offering that job and the location. So the title, that will be a short text, the location, that is going to be a short text. And finally, the company that is offering the shop. I'm going to click on finish and I'm going to save this new content type. Okay, our new content type is ready. We can access this screen here following this link where we can add new shops. Okay, now let's create two custom roles associated with this content type. The first will be a shop admin that will be able to create new jobs, update jobs, delete, list, and find jobs. And then let's create another role that will be a shop reader that will only able to read jobs, find jobs, and list jobs. So let's do that. Here we need to go to settings, and then we need to go to roles. And here we need to click on add new role. First, let's create the shop admin role. So here the description will be shops administrator all operations allowed. And as we can see here, we can select all the operations. Count, delete, find one, create, find, and update. I'm going to click here on select all, and I'm going to save this role. The new role has been created. So now let's add the shop reader role. I'm going to click again on add new role and this is shop reader. This role will be able to perform read only operations such as count, find one and find. So I'm going to select count, find one, and find. I'm going to save. And that's it for the shop reader role. Okay, now we have these two roles, the admin and the reader. Now let's create two new users. One will be a shop admin, and the other one will be a shop reader. Okay, now let's go to users, and let's click on add new user. This will be shops admin. And here this is shops admin at mail.com and some password. Okay, and the role will be shop admin and I'm going to save this new user. And let's change the password. Let's use strapi123. Let's save this. And now let's create a new user that will be a shops reader user. So this is shops reader this is shops reader at mail.com and password will be strapi123 and let's select the row that will be shop reader let's save and now we have our two users the first one is a shops admin user that will be able to perform all the operations on shops. And then we have the reader that will be able to find jobs, read jobs, and count jobs. Now let's go to Postman and let's see how Strapi handles API authorization for these two different roles. So first we need to log in these users so that they can get a JSON web token that will allow them to perform the operations on the API. So we need to perform a post request to this endpoint slash auth slash local. We are going to submit a JSON request. So this would be JSON. And here we're going to pass the user and the password using these two fields. 
the first one will be identifier. First, we are going to log in the admin user. So this is shops admin at mail.com and then the password. This will be strappy123. I'm going to click on send. And as we can see here, we're going to get a JSON Bob token. This is the token that we're going to need to pass in the authorization header to perform the API operations. And here we get the details of the user. For example, here we have the role that is associated to this user, the shops admin role, this one. Okay, so now I'm going to copy this JSON Bob token from here and I'm going to perform some operations on the shops API. So here I'm going to pass this JSON Bob token as a Peter token. So I'm going to paste that token here. And now I will be able to perform the operations. I don't get any results because we don't have any, any shops created here. Let's say that I don't pass a token here. We're going to get a 403, as we can see here. Let's paste the token back here. And now we get a 200, but an empty list. Okay, now let's create a new shop. So this will be a JSON. And here we have three fields. We have the title of the shop. Let's say DevOps engineer. The location of the shop. Let's say remote. And the company, let's say YouTube. Okay, let's perform a post request because we are going to create a new job. And now we are able to create this new job in Strapi. And if we go to the CMS and we go to shops, we should see this shop listed here. Yeah, we have this shop here. Let's go back to Postman and let's log in the shops reader user. So here, this is shops reader. I'm going to click on send and I'm going to get a JSON Bob token for that reader user. And here, this is the role. This reader role will only be able to perform read only operations such as count, find one, and find. So I'm going to grab the JSON Bob token from here and I'm going to I'm going to try to create a new shop using that role. So let's go to authorization section here and let's replace this token with the shops reader token. I'm going to paste it here and let's make some changes. This is a shop engineer and USA. And now let's try to run this request. And as we can see here, we get a 403 because this user is not authorized to perform write operations on shops. So if we perform a get operation, we should be able to see the shop that is already created as we can see here. And we can also perform the count operation. So this is slash count. Yes, we get one. That's another operation that as a read only users, we can perform on the API. I'm going to grab this JSON web token from here and let's debug this token. I'm going to decode the token here. So I'm going to paste it here. And as we can see here, we have the algorithm and content type for the JSON web token. Here we have the user identifier. This is the object ID for Mongo. Here we have the date when this token was issued, November 1st. And here we have the expiration time that is December 1st. So this token was issued with a month of duration or one month of expiration time. And this is something that we can set up in uh, Strapi. So let's go to Strapi and let's change this expiration time to one day instead of one month. Okay, let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's stop the Strapi server. And here we need to go to extensions, user permissions, and we need to create a new file and we need to call it security.json. And here we need to add a new entry for JSON Bob tokens. This is JWT 
and here we need to add a new attribute that will be the expiration time so this is expires in and we are going to set this to one day like this and here i need to move this file within this folder this config folder and now i'm going to restart the server and let's go back to postman and let's log in this user again so that we get a new json bob token and we can see the new expiration time applied to that token i'm going to click on send i'm going to grab this json bob token from here and now let's decode this token i'm going to paste it here and as we can see here this token was issued on november 1st and it's going to expire in one day another thing that we can do here is we can verify the signature for this token let's go back to visual studio code and if we go here to this shwt.js file here we have what is the secret or the signature for the json web token so let's grab this and let's verify the signature using this secret so let's go back and here if i paste that shwt secret we are able to verify the signature of this json web token that's all i have for today thank you guys for watching and i see you in the next video take care bye